I know this is a very special day for our next speaker. She has been a staunch supporter of the ideas and ideals that her father had when he started Little League in 1939. Character, courage, and loyalty. Though what he accomplished would be hard to forget, I am very sure that her father would be proud for everything she has done to help keep his memory alive for all. Please welcome the daughter of Carl Stutz, Karen Stutz Myers. Thank you. My sister, Manya Lee, and I are the daughters of Carl Stutz and Grace Stutz. And we consider our parents heroes. The world is watching this week as Little League and our towns take center stage. Little Leaguers from around the globe dream of playing baseball in the Little League World Series. In 1938, Dad's Boys, those original boys of summer, of whom five are here, they just dreamed of playing baseball. It is fitting that we take a moment to reflect on the man who made that possible. Carl Stutz was 28, unemployed, and had a young family to support. Times were financially tough. He went from business to business trying to get a job and being turned down. He would then ask if the company would consider sponsoring a boys' baseball team. He did this 56 times. And then Floyd Butchler of Lycoming Dairy said, I'll go along for the boys. I call that perseverance. He never mentioned who the men were who turned him down, not to his family and not to the press. I call that integrity. In the early spring of 1939, Dad found employment, but still needed two more sponsors and two managers. Going ahead with his plan, the records show that he used $40 of his own money that month to buy a dozen baseballs, a sample play uniform, catcher's mask, and other necessary items. Not bad. But you have to realize, he only made $80 that month. What a woman our mother was to allow one half of that monthly salary to pay for a dream. I call that confidence. Shortly before that first game, Dad secured two other managers, George and Bert Bevel, umpire Louis Brown, and two additional sponsors, Jumbo Pretzel and Lundy Lumber. When the boys took the field that historic day, June 6, 1939, three teams were suited up. Small bats had been made, shared gloves were still too large for their small hands, but they had a catcher's chest protector and a mask that all the teams used. And, as promised, a new ball for every game. From 1939 to 1950, under the tutelage of Dad, volunteer men and women start a boys baseball league in their own town, patterned after Little League. It expanded along the East Coast and westward as word spread about the wonderful program for boys and baseball. Original Little League thrived and remains the oldest Little League in the world. I call that leadership. Thus today, that man, Carl Stutz, and his program, Little League, are being honored by the naming and dedication of this bridge. We are extremely proud of what our father accomplished and thank Mayor Gabe Campana, who realized it is important to celebrate and recognize our heroes. Senator Jean Yaw for introducing and getting the bill passed in the Senate. Representatives Rick Marabito and Garth Everett for getting it through the House and Governor Corbett for signing it. I'd especially like to thank our many friends who have given encouragement and support for the past 20 years during our efforts to keep the memory of Carl Stutz alive. It has been said that a hero is someone who has given his or her life to something bigger than oneself. This memorial bridge will forever remind us of the perseverance, integrity, 
confidence and leadership of Carl E. Stutz, a son, husband, father, and hero, the founder of Little Lake Baseball. And thank you for that.